What's going on, everybody? Zach Rosenblatt here with Mike K. Our first free agency reaction pod. Uh, the first day of free agency is just about in the books. Not, I guess technically the moratorium or whatever where they can negotiate with guys. Free agency officially starts on Wednesday. The Eagles made a signing. Not necessarily one that the general public expected. It wasn't Byron Jones. He signed with the Miami Dolphins. James Bradbury signed with the Giants. The Eagles got defensive tackle Javon Hargrave from the Pittsburgh Steelers. So Mike K can take a victory lap because he's been talking about Javon Hargrave both on our pod yesterday and uh, you had a post earlier in the offseason about him, right? Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of this kid. Um, so he played... 3-4 nose tackle for the Steelers. The Steelers kind of had like a hybrid defense. Everybody's got a hybrid defense pretty much now. But he was too gapping and just killing dudes on film. Can stop the run. Actually a really impressive pass rusher. He, he's got 14 and a half sacks as a 3-4 nose tackle over four years. Former third round pick. Look, this guy's going to come in. Malik Jackson's probably only around till tw- uh, this season, and then Fletcher Cox might be gone after 2021. This guy could reasonably be the face of the defensive line for the next several years, especially with Brandon Graham getting up there in age. We don't know what's up with Derek Barnett. This was a planning the flag signing of, hey, you know, we have other needs, but defensive tackle is just as important for the present and future for this organization. I think this was a great signing. This is a great way to pivot when you've missed out on somebody like Byron Jones, a cornerback. Yes. So just to give all the details about Hargrave and the contract. So the reports are that they signed him to a three year, $39 million deal. Uh, How how much was the guarantee? A 26 million fully guaranteed. This comes a year after they signed Malik Jackson to three years, 30 million, I believe, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 Uh, He's 27 years old. Um, Just turned turned 27 in February too. So he's very young. He's only played four years. He was a third-round pick out of South Carolina State. Um, His numbers on pro football focus last year are pretty ridiculous. I was just looking at this. So he was the seventh-best graded defensive tackle in the league. He graded really highly in pass rushing and run defense. And he had – how many? He had 49 total pressures, which is number 10 in the league uh, for defensive tackles, which is all pretty good for a nose tackle, of course. I think the only nose tackle higher than I'm on here is uh, Vita VA from the the Buccaneers. Um, hey, I hear a baby in the background there, Mike. He said, no, I think it's a cat. <laughs> "Oh, it's a cat." Okay, but I don't know um, where that's coming from. <laughs> but Hargrave had uh, 14 and a half sacks in his career. He had four last year. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of the basics. But let's kind of like go through what this means. So. Cornerbacks, a few of them were signed. Bradley Roby was signed before free agency even started. Uh, Br- Byron Jones is off the board. James Brady, Bradbury is off the board. Uh, there hasn't really been any other guys that the Eagles have really been tied. I guess Christian Kirksey signed with the Packers. Um, so, yeah, so the Eagles, I, this kind of came as a – not necess- I know you th- thought they should target him. I think you were probably surprised that he was the first guy they signed, right? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I knew they were going to attack the defensive line. You and I have kind of talked about that in recent podcasts. When we were in Indy, I had heard that they really wanted somebody on the defensive line. I didn't know it was specifically Hargraves, but or Hargrave, but uh, minus you, the you just, pulled, you, just pulled, you just pulled a Philly right there. That's like a Philly yeah, idiot. Yeah, I know. That's for what's real. sure going to happen. Yeah, I'll shot Jeffries, baby. We're just making all these shirts. Um, <laughs> anyway, so look, I think this is a home run move for them. I was texting with a couple of different people uh, just around the league. I was like, this is a slam dunk. And they were all like, yeah, this is a slam dunk. So look, he's going to start at – opposite Fletcher Cox his ability to rush from the one technique position inside is going to allow Derek Barnett and Brandon Graham to eat because guys aren't going to be quarterbacks aren't going to be able to step up in the pocket that's what they need from that position now on top of that his presence allows you to rotate Malik Jackson in a strong side defensive end and uh, one technique and three technique you can move all three of those guys around There's absolutely no reason why anybody should be able to step up in the pocket with those three man mad men in the middle of this this defensive line. On top of that, they re-signed Hassan Ridgeway today, who I think is going to be one of the very few re-signings that we see from the Eagles this offseason. Great move. The guy played very, very well in the first seven games here. 
the coaching staff loved him in training camp. He really kind of flashed as an offseason addition. They traded a seventh round pick for him last year. So now they get to extend his time here for another year. And realistically, if you move on from Malik Jackson next year, maybe he's the top backup off the board um, or off the depth chart in the rotation next year. So I think overall, this is a really, really good defensive tackle group. Excuse me. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, so Zach, you, you know me. I, I, I stay rather optimistic, but what's your sense just as somebody who has been around the team and knows their philosophies about the defensive and offensive lines? What, what's, your, what's your take on this? Well, I would, I would say we all should have expected that the Eagles would go hard after a defensive tackle because that's just like the most Eagles thing to do. They're always looking for more guys in the interior. I think this probably means they won't draft somebody at defensive tackle now, which I think we both kind of thought they would. Right. Um, I don't think they really need to now. I mean, I, I guess you could draft someone in the middle to late rounds as like a developmental guy or something. But anyway, I, I mean, j- just to play devil's advocate, I will say um, they are paying a lot of money for three defensive tackles where – more often than not, they're not going to be on the field at the same time when you have Brandon Graham and Derek Barnett also there. So I think it's fair to say they're spending maybe a little too much money at the position. I, they're, they're, if you're going to spend a lot of money at a position, I think defensive tackle is probably one of the ones you want to do it at. I mean, as you saw last year, Malik Jackson got hurt in right. week one. Um, and Fletcher Cox has been banged up sometimes the last couple of years. And Malik Jackson can kick outside occasionally if they need him to. And we know Jim Schwartz loves having a rotation. This is going to be the best defensive tackle rotation he's probably ever had. Oh, for I, certain, for certain. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I haven't watched enough of Hargrave to like give an opinion about him as like a player, but like on paper, I think this makes a lot of sense. I mean, and then this goes into the, uh, you know, we've talked about this all offseason. They need to make signings like they did in 2016, and this fits in the Rodney McLeod, Nigel Bradham, Brad, Brandon Brad Brooks, Brooks, yeah, who were 26, 27 in their prime. Um, a guy that maybe a lot of the general public doesn't really know that well, but is like really highly regarded around the league, and it's. Just based on the reaction, it seems like a lot of people think Hargrave is a really good player. Um, but I, I think if if there is a criticism, it's just that they're devoting a lot of money to one position and they do have a bunch of needs elsewhere. Right? They still could fill those. I think it's pretty clear they're not going to spend a lot on a cornerback now, which maybe is the right move in the end. But just if you look at the money that Bradbury and Byron Jones got, um, I think Jones well, wound up being like $17 mil a year, right? Mm-hmm. And Bradbury is fifteen. Um, there's still some guys on the market I think they can get. A lot less than that, um, so I imagine they target that. Maybe they target a like not one of the top of the market wide receivers, but maybe a safety. But I I don't think they're going to have another big ticket signing quite like this one the rest of the way. Yeah, I think you should keep an eye on trades. I mean, Desmond Trufant's going to be released, but he wasn't on the transaction report today, so it could be that the Falcons try to trade him for a seventh round pick. Now that the news is out there for a team that just wants to grab him and restructure his contract. Another guy we've talked about before is Darius Slay from the Lions. Uh, You know, if you trade a a really good pick for him, probably like a a third round pick for him or a second round pick, he's got leverage on you. You've got to extend him. But my thought process is, as we get closer and closer to the free agency deadline, I'm wondering if the Lions just, you know, kind of put their hands together and just like, you know what? He doesn't want to be here. We don't want to sign him to extra money. We'll take a third for him. I mean, you look at what DeAndre Hopkins, the return for him was, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I think just in general, I think this off is just so weird that we're going to see some trades like that, where it's like, does it really make sense? Like the, the Russell Kong trade for Trey Turner was maybe the, one of the worst trades I've ever seen. So it's like, and then, and then Bill O'Brien said, hold my beer. Right. I mean, well, Bill O'Brien, I mean, I, <laughs> You know what, for all the good I guess he's done as a middling head coach, I mean, really, as a general manager, are you sure you didn't need one? Um, <laughs> but yeah, so just in closing, look, the Eagles got significantly better up front, which will make them significantly better in the secondary come September. If everybody's healthy, if everybody's doing what they're supposed to do, I think this is a really good move. Yeah, I think that's – I think. That well, so if how would you grade this movie if we were given it a grade? Um, an A minus. A minus. Wow. Okay. I mean, their defensive line is going to be scary next year. That's for sure. Um, well, and that's what they need. That's what they were yeah. best at in 2017. They yeah. lost that edge, and I think you know to to further your point, at defensive end, I don't think there's a, as much pressure to sign a guy now 
Yeah. Now you can focus on drafting a defensive end. I'd rather you draft a defensive end than draft a defensive tackle in this draft. If, yeah, if I'm I, being honest, and, and well, cause, because the def- it's not as like deep of an edge rusher class, and there's not like an elite guy, right? But there are like a few like interesting guys, like AJ Epinesa from Iowa could be sure. there at 21. Um, the dude from LSU probably won't be there, but uh, Yeter Gross Matos from Penn State, like they're if if one of those guys is there at 21, I would be surprised if the Eagles didn't at least consider them because that's just kind of their mo. Right, and and you know what? Here's the thing: you missed out on the top two corners. Are you just going to sit on your hands? Like the wide receiver market's very interesting to me because as of now, we're recording this at nine fifteen on Monday. Robbie Anderson's still available. Amari Cooper's still available. Really, no wide receivers have signed. And I'm telling you, this market is going to crash a little bit at the wide receiver position because of how good the draft is. So the Eagles slow playing this at certain positions is actually very smart. Uh, I know it's hard to give Howie Roseman credit when you, when you're high strung about the moves that they haven't made, but you know, I mean, look, they missed out on Byron Jones. It is what it is. Other places had money. Miami doesn't have a, a sales tax or sorry, have a, has, doesn't have a state income tax, uh, which I've learned the brutality of in New Jersey. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, you, you were going to have to, really overdo it with this contract. And I think Miami is just, it, they made a better offer. Um, and Miami's doing everything they can to get a lot more athletic on defense. If you look at the signings they had with Kyle Van Noy, but to not stress away from the point, I think if you're the Eagles, if you're not, if you're missing out on a corner, go back to your philosophy, which is build the defensive lines, which will make everyone better. And I think that's what they did here. Yeah, we should say a few other guys that we mentioned on our other pod uh, did get picked up today. Case Keenum signed with the Browns. Uh, the linebacker from the Bears, Nick Kwiatkowski, signed with uh, the, the Raiders. Raiders. Um, it did, the Eagles weren't really mentioned as a team that were after him either. It sounded like the Giants were trying for him. Yeah, uh, he he was a little bit over what I had heard their initial. Yeah, seven, he got seven million a year, I think, right? Yeah, they're they're probably looking to spend around four to five. Yeah, so I mean, I would I would I would expect them to sign a line if. If I had to put money on a position they signed next, it would probably be linebacker, I would say. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I, th- I think that's fair. But so, so real quick, we should talk about that DeAndre Hopkins trade for a second because I like it, it. It seems like you know maybe this isn't Howie Roseman's fault because it seems like some teams sometimes just go and do a trade without like searching around the league for a better offer. But like, why didn't the Eagles make this trade for DeAndre Hopkins? I got- yeah, I mean, I'm I'm wondering if there was a specific place that they saw an opportunity. Yeah, that's probably. I mean, I, Bill O'Brien's a bad general manager, so it's possible he literally just didn't call around the league and he like fell in love with David Johnson for some reason. Yeah, like I, mean, a, I mean, I mean, but- I kill I kill Steve Kime all the time for being a bad general manager. <laughs> I mean, that was the best deal he's ever made. Right? I mean, <laughs> well, and well, Chandler Jones is a pretty good trade, but yeah, yeah, this is yeah. the best player for player trade he's ever made by yeah. far. Um, he got it. He got a fourth round pick out of it. Still, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's bizarre to me. It's like here, have it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but you know what's weird is they give him a fourth round pick for this year, and they're giving them a fourth round pick for 2021 yeah that's a great so, point yeah so it's like hold on to my fourth round pick too while you're at it like what yeah yeah I, it shouldn't have, shouldn't have been the reverse of that right it, it's like these two bald guys got together and were like hey <laughs> let's have some fun you know what it's I, I i don't know these gms are nothing nothing against bald guys obviously but <laughs> they are, but steve Kime <laughs> and bill o'brien are both bald yeah <laughs> that's a great point but i was just thinking like you look at like the jadavian clowny trade I, I mean i know there's mitigating circumstances and all this stuff but it seems like like top of the market guys, it seems like the Eagles don't necessarily engage as much as like other teams, or maybe they lowball on offers or something like that. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I think I think Howie's got a reputation for sna- uh, for for skunking teams and trades. Like, yeah, he always wins PR wise, almost always. Like you go back to the um, Darrell Green Beckham trade with Dennis Kelly, he knocked that out of the park for a PR standpoint. Dennis Kelly just got an extension to be a starting right tackle in the league. Uh, today, right, and uh, we don't even know what where Doriel Green Beckham is right now. So, like, <laughs> actually, I think he's in jail. Actually, probably. No, but, I uh, I'm pretty sure he is. Actually, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, tough, tough, tough break for that guy. We should mention. Speaking of of tough breaks, uh, actually, not tough breaks. The opposite of tough breaks. You should sign up for Eagles Extra. Listen, we've <laughs> we have uh, really. To the point where my boss literally just emailed me and said, "No more text for the night." 
because we were giving away so much information. We're giving you so much information right when you need it. You don't have to be on Twitter. You don't have to listen to the radio, uh, except for BGN radio. Or not, uh, except for, well, BGN radio is nice too, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was a Freudian no, slip. No, no free ads here, Mike. No free ads, yeah. But you should listen to the No Huddle Show podcast. Sorry. I was I had a flashback to like seven years ago. Um, but, uh, you know, so you don't have to listen to the radio, whatever. Um, look, it's in every single one of our articles. I've been spamming the heck out of Twitter with information. But before I do that, I send that to Eagles Extra. Please join in on the fun. We're having a great time. We had a bunch of people sign up for, for this service today. Um, you can ask us all your questions. I'm doing daily AMAs. Uh, throughout free agency, I, I know it's it's kind of a rough time for our country right now. It's a rough time for Philly. It's a rough time for Jersey. I'm here for you. Send me your questions. Let's chat. And that's my plug. All right. Before we go, we should mention that uh, Corey Clement, the Eagles decided not to tender him an offer as a restricted free agent, which I think we probably expected. And so he'll be an unrestricted free agent. I, I imagine a team will pick him up. On, maybe he comes back to the Eagles on a cheap deal. Maybe he signs somewhere else. But I th- he has a job in the NFL next year, I think. Yeah, for sure. I actually, I do, I agree with you. I think he'll be back on a cheaper deal because you have to remember the tender is actually over one million dollars for even the original round tender. So it's like I think it's like one point three or one point four. I haven't looked at the new the, this year's projections since the salary cap came out, but it's still a decent deal. It's above the minimum salary. So if you can get a guy back on the minimum salary, he's coming off back to back injury plagued years. Maybe he has no market value. You can re-sign him for cheaper. It's a business decision. Obviously he was a Super Bowl hero and he still could be effective, especially with Darren Sproles now retired and the Eagles using Miles Sanders and Boston Scott the way they are. Yeah. I should say somebody suggested. So there's a rumor that the bears are trying to trade for Nick Foles. Oh, Uh, so somebody, somebody suggested that, the Bears should get Nick Foles and Corey Clement because they already have Trey Burton, so they could recreate the the Philly special in Chicago. <laughs> oh yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and they well, just signed Jimmy Graham. What are they doing? I know, they're, they're, so they're paying two tight ends like sixteen million dollars combined next year, or something like it's that. Crazy. That's and they, and, both, and they can't not even that good. Yeah. And they can't even move on from Trey Burton. That contract is gross. <laughs> the I mean, NFL, good for his man. agent, though. I mean, you know, whatever. And the Bears are a team that don't even have a lot of cap space either, so that's a very interesting decision. And then they're going to try and trade for Nick Foles, although I guess the Jaguars would have to cover most of that contract. But anyway, um, anything else you want to hit before we before we wrap up here? Nope, just Eagles extra again. That's the kicker, baby. That's the kicker. Yeah, that's the kicker. All right, and we'll, we'll be back uh, if the Eagles make any other uh, notable moves. Uh, thanks for listening to our – reaction pot our first one of free agency uh we hope we get a few more of these uh thanks for listening guys deuces